Good morning. This is Pastor Tim Wells, pastor of Cross of Christ Lutheran Church in Aurora, Nebraska. I want to welcome you to worship. This is for Sunday, November 14th, the 25th Sunday after Pentecost. We begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll now have a brief order of confession and absolution. I ask. Do you confess your sins before God your Father, and do you seek his forgiveness in Christ? If so, say, I do. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now we turn to God's readings for the day. Uh, first, we have our Old Testament reading coming from the book of Daniel, chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. At that time shall arise Michael, the great prince who has charge of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never has been since there was a nation till that time. But at that time your people shall be delivered, everyone whose name shall be found written in the book. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky above, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading comes from the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verses 11 through 25. Every priest stands daily at his service, offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, waiting from that time until his enemies should be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. And the Holy Spirit also bears witness to us, for after saying, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my laws on their hearts and write them on their minds. Then he adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, his flesh. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day drawing near. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 13th chapter, beginning with the first verse. As Jesus came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what wonderful stones and what wonderful buildings. And Jesus said to him, Do you see these great buildings? There will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. And as Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign when all these things are about to be accomplished? And Jesus began to say to them, See that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and they will lead many astray. And when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. These are but the beginning of the birth pains. But be on your guard, for they will deliver you over to councils, and you will be beaten in synagogues. 
and you will stand before governors and kings for my sake to bear witness before them. And the gospel must first be proclaimed to all nations. When they bring you to trial and deliver you over, do not be anxious beforehand what you are to say, but say whatever is given you in that hour, for it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. And brother will deliver brother over to death, and the father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please pray with me. Lord God, may the words of my mouth, may the meditations, may the thoughts of all of our hearts, all of our minds be pleasing in your sight. Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. It's coming. It's not a matter of if, but when. It's coming. And you're probably wondering, okay, pastor, What's coming? Well, for one thing, the new Spider-Man movie is coming, coming out in December. <laughs> and I got to tell you, I'm really excited for this movie. Uh, for the last 20 years, three different actors have played Spider-Man, each in their own universe, their own version of the story. Rumor has it in this newest movie universes are going to collide and all three actors are going to play Spider-Man together in the same movie. If you are a Spider-Man fan, this is the movie that you've been waiting for. This is the movie you want to see. And guess what? It's coming. But that's not all that's coming. Thanksgiving is coming. Right around the corner which means it's time to buy that turkey. It's time to grab as many cans of green beans and cream of mushroom soup as you can find. It's time to get that sweet potatoes, get the sweet potatoes, get the, the marshmallows ready. Time to start thinking about getting the crust prepared for that perfect pumpkin pie. Everyone loves a good Thanksgiving dinner, and guess what? It's coming. But that's not all that's coming. Christmas is coming. Which means soon we'll find ourselves hanging off the edges of our roofs, Clark Griswold style, right? Trying to put up Christmas lights. We'll be putting the ornaments on the tree, decorating the house. Soon we'll be listening to our favorite Christmas albums, watching our favorite Christmas movies. Soon we'll be baking and eating our favorite Christmas goodies. And then of course there's all the Christmas shopping. Christmas is right around the corner. It's coming. But again, that's not all that's coming. Do you know what else is coming? Trouble is coming. In today's reading from the book of Daniel, we're told that a time of trouble is coming unlike anything that's ever been before. In our gospel reading, Jesus tells us, nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, family members against family members, there will be famines and earthquakes. And all of this will just be the beginning of birth pains. Just the beginning of more trouble to come. Trouble is coming. And if you're paying attention to life in this world, trouble is already here. We shouldn't be surprised when we experience troubles in our lives. We know it's coming. Trouble's inevitable, right? People, they're going to get sick. 
earthquakes, other natural disasters, they're going to cause damage. Politics, it's going to divide. There's going to be turmoil and conflict in families where there should be love and security. And people that we love, people that we hold near and dear in our hearts, are going to die. Trouble is coming. Trouble is already here. We experience it every day. It's coming. But that's not all that's coming. Jesus is coming. When Jesus comes back, when he returns, he is going to bring an end to all of our troubles. There will be no more sickness. There will be no more politics. There will be no more turmoil, no more conflict. There will be no more death. Jesus is coming to save us. Salvation is coming. Going back to our reading from Daniel, God says you will be delivered. All those who have died will rise. And those who have faith will shine like the sun and receive everlasting life. In our gospel reading, Jesus says, Those who endure these troubles to the end will be saved. Yes, trouble is coming. Trouble's already here. But salvation is also coming. Salvation is already here. In today's reading from the book of Hebrews, the author of Hebrews urges us to draw near the presence of God and receive his salvation. Now, once upon a time, that was impossible. Because of our sin, we were unable to enter the presence of God. But now Jesus has come into this world as our perfect high priest. And through his perfect once and for all sacrifice, giving his own life in death on the cross, Jesus has washed us clean, has made us perfect in God's sight. Now we can enter the presence of God with confidence because Jesus has forgiven our sins. So that's what the author of Hebrews urges us to do, to draw near the presence of God. What's that look like? He says, hold fast to the confession of hope that you have. Hold fast to your faith. And not just alone, but with your brothers and sisters in Christ. Gather together. Don't fall into the habit, as some have, of, of not gathering together, but gather together to love each other, to do good works together, to trust in God's promises together, to receive God's gifts together, to build each other up, to encourage one another. What are we talking about here? We're talking about worship. As we find ourselves living in a world of trouble, where do we go to find, to experience the salvation that God has promised? In worship. Every time we gather with brothers and sisters in Christ around God's word, we find ourselves in the presence of God experiencing the very salvation that he has promised. Yes, trouble is coming. Trouble is already here. But Jesus is coming. Jesus is already here. He's here every time we gather with our brothers and sisters in Christ for worship. Jesus is here. It's coming. It's the middle of the week. You've had a rough time with work. It's been brutal. You're desperate for rest. You're wondering, when is this finally going to end? Guess what? Sunday's right around the corner. It's coming. 
you've really done it this time. Your heart is overwhelmed with grief. You're wondering if you can ever be forgiven. You're in desperate need of grace and forgiveness. Guess what? Sunday's right around the corner. It's coming. You're grieving. You're hurting. You're in desperate need of comfort and hope. Guess what? Sunday's right around the corner. It's coming. As we experience troubles throughout the week, we can learn to look forward to gathering for worship every Sunday to receive rest, to receive forgiveness, to receive comfort and hope. Every time we gather together for worship, we get a taste of what's to come. We get a taste of relief from our troubles. Not a complete removal of our troubles. As long as we find ourselves living in a sinful world, there will be troubles. But we get a taste of relief from those troubles. And every time we get that taste of relief, we learn to endure the troubles. We learn to endure those troubles because we know those troubles will not last forever. Jesus is going to return. That day is coming. He's going to come back. He's going to bring a complete end to all our troubles. In the meantime, what do we do? In the meantime, we draw near the presence of God to experience his salvation right here, right now. We gather for worship. We build each other up. We trust in God's promises. And we endure the troubles. And why is it that we can endure the troubles? Because we know it's coming. Amen. I invite you now to bow your heads and join me. Together we'll pray the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now we receive the blessing of our God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift up his face, shine on you, and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. That concludes our worship for this morning. Uh, we are approaching a time in the year in which uh, the church calendar uh, is going to be changing seasons. And so next week will be the last Sunday of the church year. Uh, similar to today's readings, but even more so next week, will be focused on the end times. Looking forward to the return of Christ. And then that Wednesday, and this would be Wednesday, November. Oh, of course, I'm going to mess up dates here. Um, hold on just a second. I don't have it in my bulletin here. Let me look up my calendar. Um, Wednesday, November 24th, there we go, we will have our Thanksgiving Eve service. That will be at 7 o'clock. And I want to encourage you to join us as we give thanks to God for all that he has given to us, all that he continues to do for us. Let's see, what else do we have? Uh, our youth are still planning on raking yards. That might be today, this Sunday. Um, if you're on the email list, check that out to know for sure. Just depends on how many leaves fall from the trees between now and then. Uh, if you have a yard that needs some help raking, or a neighbor or a family friend who needs some help, let us know. Let's see. On the 27th, that's a Saturday, that is the Saturday after Thanksgiving. We'll be doing a live nativity downtown. 
And if you'd like to be a part of that, helping to share the good news of Jesus with folks in our community, you can sign up in the fellowship hall. Let's see, the 28th, that's the Sunday after Thanksgiving. During the Sunday school hour, we're going to be making Advent wreaths and learning about the Advent season, learning about the symbolism behind each candle. And uh, if you'd like to be a part of that, again, we do need you to sign up for that one uh, just because we need to gather supplies. So hope you'll join us for that. will be a fun intergenerational Sunday school time. And we are continuing to uh, receive uh, sock donations. We're collecting socks for a special free shopping day for families in need in our community. And that free shopping day will take place December 11th in our fellowship hall. Socks, new pairs of socks will be a part of that. Uh, we are also beginning collection of other items as well in Sweet C. So this is the building that's across our parking lot. Uh, Sweet C, so that would be on the far west side of the building. Uh, Monday nights from 4 to 6 p.m. now you can bring uh, any kind of gifts that you want to share for that special giveaway. So clothing, toys, uh, Socks, of course, we're collecting already. Coats, anything anything you can think of, uh, you can bring in uh, on Mondays between now and December 11th. And I think that's all I'll announce for now. There's a lot going on. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.